this video is about an inverting amplifier, this circuit here, possibly the simplest op-amp circuit that exists, based on an op-amp chip with the non-inverting input connected to ground through this black wire, and a pair of resistors, a feedback resistor and an input resistor connecting the input to the op-amp to the output. On my circuit board, this one here is a feedback resistor, and this one down here is the input resistor. This potentiometer here is not part of the amplifier circuit, it's just providing a voltage so we can see what happens. In my amplifier that I've built today, the feedback resistor has a value of 100 kilo ohms, and the input resistor has a value of 100 kilo ohms. And we should know from our amplifier theory that gain is the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage. And in the case of this amplifier, the inverting amplifier, the gain is the feedback resistors multiplied by minus 1 divided by the input resistance. So with our values, we get the gain is minus 100k divided by 100k, so the gain is minus 1. The output voltage should be minus 1 multiplied by the input voltage. Let's have a look and see what happens. Here's my input voltage. Here's my output voltage. If we make the input voltage 1 volt, then we can see the output voltage is indeed minus 1 volt. If we make the input voltage 2 volts, we can see the output voltage is indeed minus 2 volts. And it works the other way. If we make the input voltage minus 1 volt, then the output voltage is plus 1 volt. Minus minus 1 volt is plus 1 volt. And if we make the input voltage minus 2 volts, then the output voltage is plus 2 volts. So our inverting amplifier is inverting because when the input voltage is negative, the output is positive. And when the input is positive, the output is negative. Now you might have noticed that our amplifier circuit so far hasn't actually done much amplifying. The output voltage was the same as the input voltage, albeit for the minus sign. Let's see if we can change that. Remember that the gain is RF divided by RI. So by changing the resistor values, we should be able to change the gain. So I'm going to take out the feedback resistor. I'm going to put in a bigger value. This is 470K. I'm going to change my diagram very cunningly to reflect the changes on the circuit board. And now we should be able to work out our new gain, remembering that gain is RF over RI. So our new circuit should have a gain of 470K divided by 100K with a minus sign, which is minus 4.7. So the output voltage should be 4.7 times bigger than the input voltage. Let's have a look. So we'll take the input voltage up to 1 volt. And there we go. The output is minus 4.7, as expected. And if we take it up to 2 volts, then the output should be, there you go. Well, 2 times 4.7 is 9.4. And there it is, 9.4 volts, minus and if we go negative, minus 1 volt gives us plus 4.7 volts. So our amplifier is behaving as we expect it to. It's increasing the output voltage by a factor of 4.7 determined by the feedback resistor and the input resistor. Of course, we don't just have to change the feedback resistor. We could change the input resistor, and that's exactly what I've done here. I've made the input resistor 470K and the feedback resistor 100K. And the same theory applies in that the gain should be RF over RI with a minus sign. So what does that mean in this case? Well, it means that the gain is now the feedback resistance minus 100K divided by the input resistance 470K, which gives me a gain of minus 0.21. Now what does that mean? It's a fraction, it's smaller than 1. So the output should be 0.2 times by the input voltage. Let's have a look and see what happens. If we make the input voltage 1 volt, 
you notice the output is indeed minus 0.2 volts. And if we make the input 2 volts, the output is indeed minus 0.4 volts. So our amplifier works just as well when it's making the signal smaller, which is called attenuation, as it does when it's making the signal bigger, which is called amplification. I've returned my amplifier to having the 470k as a feedback resistor, so the gain of the circuit is now going to be given by this equation, which is 4.7 times the input voltage. But now I've changed my display to be a graph against time, and we're going to see what happens when I change the input voltage. So I'll just press play. So at the moment, both input and output are zero, and I make the input go positive, the output goes negative. This is the output. I make the input go negative, the output goes positive, and if I keep going, you see the output completely mirrors the input, but it's amplified by a factor of 5, or 4.7, I should say, and it's inverted because it's always opposite to the input, so I'm just making my own sort of pseudo sine wave here as I go along. If I stop and just let it level at a DC value, then the output responds. If I make the input positive again, the output responds by being negative. And if I return them back to zero, they both go along being zero. I've reset my display, left my amplifier as it was before with a gain of minus 4.7, and I want to illustrate what happens if you're not very careful. So I'll press play. I make my input voltage go positive, and the output goes negative as expected. And this is all working very well. But what I'm going to do now is make the input voltage go too big. I'm going to make the input voltage keep increasing, like this. And what you'll notice is now, the output voltage is no longer changing with the input voltage. If I change the input voltage like this, the output voltage is just staying fixed. And the reason is because my input voltage is now around about 5 volts, so the output should be around about 20 volts. But I'm using a 12 volt power supply. The maximum output available to the op-amp is plus or minus 10 volts. It's saturated. It cannot go to the volts it wants to go to. And if I make my input voltage change around about the 5 volt mark, the output does not respond at all. So to make my amplifier work, I need to bring my input voltage back down to a value where the output isn't saturated. So if I'm using an amplifier in a circuit, you've got to be very careful that your input voltage is small enough that the output voltage doesn't saturate.